Todd Stream. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays, Hanukkah, uh, Kwanzaa, whatever you happen to celebrate. Um, it's Christmas Eve, and so I don't have a whole lot to show, but I got a little bit. Um, I went to Ollie's, and I picked up a copy of, uh, they had this on sale. I went and picked up a copy of uh, Warriors of Crim. Okay? Uh, yeah, they had it on sale. Um, it was... Box here. It had an internal box with it. I screwed up yesterday and dumped all of it out in the floor by accident. But, uh, yeah, uh, it was on sale at Ollie's. Okay? Get your butt to Ollie's. Okay? If you're interested in this. If not, don't worry about it. Uh, compared to the price of what one of these Wids Kid uh, miniatures was, okay, you get six miniatures in this box. Look what this sucker was listed at, okay? Their price was 100 bucks. They went to 999 So if you go to Ollie's, they've got this right here. They had a guy there that was getting ready to buy all of them. And Mama said, well, uh, I want to get one. So we did. And so I got me one. Now, I'm gonna, I opened it up and looked at it the other day. Um, I don't know, guys. All I can say is it can be repurposed. I would not pay the money that they were asking at it at retail when it came out. I'll tell you that right now. And as far as the quality, that's iffy. Okay. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and uh, have a look at it. Okay. We'll go ahead and open her up. Um, let me set the thing right here so we can. I guess I need to make sure that I'm streaming. But... All right. Let me take up the box here. Lift it up. All right. When we pull off the box, this is what we got. Okay. We've got a uh, Warriors of Crayon scenario book. Uh, a rule book. Yep. And this is supposed to be um, used in conjunction with the uh, Shadow of the Dragon Queen. Um, but I don't know. I... The damn thing is confusing as hell as far as what I've looked at it. I've watched a couple of YouTube videos on it. Myself, I will probably repurpose the pieces and use them for something else. That's just the way that I am. Um, I don't know. Uh, some people seem to enjoy the game. It ain't too bad. Um, it's a it's a well, it's a battle board game, basically what it is. Um, works almost like the battle system in AD and D Second Edition. It's the best way I can describe it. I'm still learning the ins and outs of it, so don't particularly uh, try to command my mastery on it because, uh, to be quite honest, guys, I don't know much about the game either. So, um, with the exception of the figures came. The figures, uh, there are six of them, but I can say that they are not of the highest quality. Um... I'm sorry, but for the quality and what they're charging for most of their miniatures, really all you're getting is the miniatures. And these miniatures, they've had some kind of damn lacquer shit put on them to make them look a little better, but I don't know. I don't think it helps them that much. Okay? Let's see here. Okay, let me show you. All right? Take a look at the Kinder here. This is the one that's only significant. I like, I like the one that's the Kinder, at least. But the detail is not that great, and they've got some kind of black lacquer shit that was put on it. Um, I don't know. It was when it was packaged. Um, yeah, some of the materials for the heroes, I mean, Wizards tried to sparkle troll it. It's like one half of this was packaged with a good intention in mind, and then the sparkle trolls got a hold of it and tried to fuck it up. So that's the best way that I can describe it. Um they had good intentions starting out, but it probably just fell short. Part of Dragonlance's problem with Wizards of the Coast is just the fact that they didn't have anybody that knew what the hell they were doing with the marketing. Okay? Um, they're letting goofballs run their marketing division for them. That's part of their problem. But uh, this thing, anyways, you got the six figures. If you were going to go buy this for nine bucks, think about it. I think this thing went for like seven or eight dollars. Okay, just these two right here. All right, so 
you're getting six miniatures out of this. And the fact that you got a one that looks like a kinder. And it's also got a hat. I don't know what the hell they call it in the 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 supplement material that they sent that they use for this is complete garbage so i don't i don't use it at all it um she like carries a flying lizard or some shit i don't know they sparkle trolled it i don't pay any attention to the uh so-called characters that they want you to use for it it's they want you to use your you don't really have characters you've got tokens i don't know it's really weird the fucking it's paper thin on material let's put it that way um it wasn't to me, it seems like it was kind of shittily conceived. All right, here's the dice. These look like the dragon dice. See, I've got a set of these that look almost identical in the damn uh, dragon dice. I don't know if they're still in here or not. No, I put them up. They're sitting up someplace. But yeah, the dragon dice. And you got the little markers and stuff. But I don't know. For nine bucks, fuck it. You know, shit. You can repurpose it and use it for something. Um, there's always something you can use for it. Yeah, you got the little cards and shit. Little odds and ends. But uh, that's all that's really to it. I got to look through it and uh, learn about it. See if I can manage to uh, salvage it. I don't know. It was nine bucks. I wasn't really losing anything on it. So at least I got some miniatures out of it. And I like miniatures. I don't mind them. I mean, I'm not more much for the shit that they put on it. I don't know this lacquer shit they put on it. I guess to make it look a little better. It didn't. It just kind of, it looks like somebody spit tobacco or something on it or stained it. It don't look that great. So, but there it is. You get what you get for nine bucks. That's about all I pay for it. I'll be goddamn if I was going to pay a hundred for it. They take it and pike it, buddy boy. But if anybody wants to really understand, you know, why Wizards is going broke, mostly it's because of their bad marketing. Okay. That's why they're going broke. It ain't got nothing to do with being woke. It's just the fact that it's bad marketing. It's a crappily put together product. And like I said, this stuff can be repurchased. It can be repurposed. You can use it for other games. Uh, that's about the best that I can tell you to do for it. Um, there's some people that actually enjoy it. I mean, it's usable if you want to sit down and learn it. Okay. But like I said, don't expect much. Um, it is what it is. But it's better than nothing. Um, it was 10 bucks, so that's a steal. I think that's pretty good. So, like I said, guys, if you want to, get your butt down to Ollie's and uh, pick you up a copy of this. If for anything, at least get it as a collector's item. Uh, you can flip it later and uh, trade it for something that you actually want. You know, that's what I would always do. So, that's what you do. You wheel and deal, you mix and match, you get along, and there you go. Simple as that. I don't think I'm going to do anything with it, to be real honest. I mean, it's not, I'm not going to split it apart. I'm not going to tear it up or nothing. Um, I, don't really, I don't know why the hell you'd want to buy it, though, because you can get it at Ollie's. Trust me, they've got Ollie's all over the United States, so I'm pretty sure you can find, you can possibly find one. Of course, I'd say there's probably a couple of scalpers on eBay that done figured it out. Like I said, we went to go get one, and uh, there was a guy there that was getting ready to buy all of them that were sitting there, so. <clears throat> but anyway, want to show you that uh, I downloaded some uh, maps from the Dragonlance Atlas. Okay, I got a whole bunch of them. <coughs> I can actually pull that up on the uh, on the uh, the thing there. So we'll look at it that way instead of me having to point the camera at it. Okay, but I wanted to show you all that. Okay. But uh, they're selling that at Ollie's, Ollie's for about nine bucks. It retails for about a hundred. So there you go. All right. Um, you the figures are still usable in the little odds and ends. You can always repurpose this stuff. I like the drawing. I mean, I like the concept of the the hat and everything. Astro Demaris has a hat. So there you go. All right. Um, all right, guys. We're gonna take a real quick uh, settle here. I'm gonna load my bowl and then we'll come right back. And I'll pull us something up to look at here. Okay? So just uh, stay tuned. Get you something to drink. And uh, we'll be right back. All right. Do, 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 do. Okay. I'm not going to turn the audio off for a second. I'm going to leave it on for a second. We're just going to see if we roll in here. Come on. 
But I figured I could do about a 45-minute stream or something, you know. Something like that. I got at least one viewer. Hello, who's tuning, whoever's tuning in. Merry Christmas, by the way, forever's tuned in. Do -do 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 -do. There we go. All righty, and we're back. We are back, we are back, we are back. Okay. Let's see what we can find here. Do, 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 do. Okay. I'm going to pull up the Dragonlance Atlas, and we'll have a look at that. Mm. Yeah, I was rather impressed with it. I, I didn't mind it either. It was pretty cool. Okay, hold on just a second here, guys. Wait, just a second. Let me get it pulled up. Okay. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Where is it at? Oh, boy. Okay. Just looking at it just a minute. Oh, there it is. If been a snake, it would have bit me. There it goes. Okay. All righty. We got that. And then we go to here. We're going to go to full screen application. And we're going to, there we go. Do, 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 do. No, wait, wait a minute. Oh. Hold on a sec, guys. Shit. I'll get it here in a minute. There we go. There we go. All righty. I think we're showing. Or we should be. Are we ready? There it is. Yep. The Atlas of the Dragonlance World. This come out in 1987. This was when this came out. Yep. I'm looking to see if it's going to pop up on my screen here, guys. Hold on just for a second. There it is. I'm looking at my second monitor to make sure that I'm coming through here. As soon as I see it on my other screen, we'll be ready to roll. But, uh, yeah, this was very interesting. I like this. As a matter of fact, I consider this, if you've got second edition material, this is what you want to use. I never really sat down to look at this, but the maps in this are very good. They're very good, especially the ones for Zach Saroth. Oh, yeah. They're very good. Yep. Okay. All right. Good deal. We're showing here. All right. Let me pull it up here. Okay. We're going to move it in just ever so slightly. There we go. All right. There we go. I like this. Okay. They got the pre cladicalism map. I like the map they show of Kryn. Okay. Look at there. That's just the con continent of Ancelon. Do you realize that there is a whole section of Kryn that they haven't viewed yet? Okay, they haven't even discovered. That was the whole point. That is just one section of a continent. And Ancelon sits at the equator. So it's whole friggin' climate and everything is weird. Look at that. Okay, that's just one half of the planet. And it's near, I guess, near the bottom of the equatorial. Okay, if the Dragon Isles are there, does that mean the other pole and there's an old other side of the frickin' globe? I mean, that's amazing. See, there's the Dragon Isles. That's Talatus. Well, actually, there's Talatus right there. There's the Dragon Isles. Uh, Mythos, Cothus, uh, I guess the Talatus is here. There's Hilo. Okay. This is uh, pre-cataclysm. That was before the cataclysm, I think. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is after. See, because there's Hilo. There's Urgoth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, it is pre-cataclysm. Worldview pre-cataclysm. Yeah, it's pre-cataclysm. I was going to say. Because northern and southern Urgoth are cut off. Yeah. There we go. See, that's what it looks like during Northern the War of the Lands. Okay, you got Northern Urgoth, which is Hilo. 
The Sankrist Embassy, Balfour Common, was established right about here. Um, there's now Mount Nevermind. There's Southern Ergolf. Yeah. High Close Tower, Abyssinia. Zach Saroth, New Sea. Yeah. Pax Starkas. Solace. See? Just that tiny journey right there. All right. What I liked about this, okay, let me show you this. These were good, but the best ones I found to use for the gaming are the stuff like through Dark and Wood. See, if you're going to use the Classics Collection, this is the these are the maps that I would use. So, yeah, I would definitely get a copy of this. You can find this in two places, okay? You can either get it from drive through or you can find it on Internet Archive. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Um, you can find it in PDF form. Yeah. Um, but this right here, yeah, I printed it out uh, yesterday. I printed some out on cardstock. Um, I used, yeah, I used my printer. I used my front and back duplex printer. But as you can see, they printed out quite well. That's skull cap. Yeah. Racing's Laboratory. Yeah. And see, I printed these out so I can use them in game. So, when I'm going to use Crystal Mirror Lake or Silas, the town of Silas, see? There's Silas right there. These are the maps that I use. See, look at that. They're excellent. And you can slide them under the glass. So, yeah, I would definitely. Get a copy of the PDF and print these babies out. Get you a nice duplex printer and you print them things out. Look at that. And see, I can slide it right under the glass. So, it's ready to rock and roll. But yes, those are very good maps. Very good maps. Yep, the Dragonlance Atlas. Come out in 1987. Yep, see? Excellent, excellent stuff. Yeah. It's got the end of the last album. Now, I noticed this right here, a death pit. Right at the back of the end. I wonder if that, if they didn't have a graveyard, is that where they just stuck their garbage? Or buried their dead? Because it's the only thing here labeled death pit. I'm guessing that's where they buried their dead. Don't know. There's a picture of the end of the last home before it was torn down and after. See, look at this. Yeah, they have the kitchen in a, what it looked like the original end with the new kitchen. Yep. And then they have the end. Damaged end. That's after it was torn down by Ember. That's what it looked like after Ember got a hold of it. Damn. See? Look, out, look at that walkway. Going all the way up. Those trees, those violin woods on Cran are like taller than any tree found on Earth. I mean, there's no tree on Earth that would resemble that, but it's supposed to be a violin wood. They don't have trees that big. That's definitely fantasy. Yeah, Tika's houses. Yeah. Crystal Mirror Lake. Yeah. Prayer's Eye Peak and Darkened Wood. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. The Quayshu Village. Yeah. The Wicker Dragon. The Draconian Huts. One hour after lunch. Yep. Yeah. Zach Saroth. Yep. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing maps. Look at that. Bapu's Secret Path. Yeah. Oh, they're excellent maps. These are actually better than the ones in the module. So, yeah, I would definitely pick up a copy of this. If you want to uh, run some of the classics, I would definitely pick this up. For people that want to play the classic Dragonlance, you better believe it. Yep. 
So, that'll be on your list right there for starting out. If you want to start out playing Heroes of the Lance, okay, the first two products, if you're starting out for Dragon Lance, you need to go to Drive Through or Internet Archive, pick up the classics, Volume 1, that's the first four modules, or you can get 1, 2, and 3. Most of the time they have them in bundles. Now, these were released when the second edition came out. Okay, so they're a little bit different from the original uh, one-off modules. They did some uh, addendums and little upgrades and stuff. But uh, between this, okay, I made a binder for mine. Um, see, it's the original. But uh, between this and the Dragonlance Atlas, those should be the first two things that you would pick up. If you wanted to play the books, play Dragons of Autumn Twilight, that's what you would pick up. That's what I would recommend you picking up right here. Get your Classics Volume 1 and your Dragonlance Atlas. And then go to it. Oh, incidentally, you might want to order this one too. Dragonlance Adventures. Okay? If you pick up those three, and yes, they are available. You can find them. Uh, you can still find them. Uh, you can get them in PDF form, or you can get them on print-on-demand. There's some people that can get them ordered. Uh, print-on-demand takes longer, but yeah, you can still get them. Um, I prefer to print them out and make my own. Uh, print-on-demand is, is what it is. All they do is use their printers. It's not, all, it's not all that better. I bought one of Boot Hill, and it wasn't that great. Uh, the one that I put together for Boot Hill looked better than the one I bought from them, so there you go. It's all in personal taste, okay? Uh, but I always support someone legally purchasing it, if uh, at all possible. But, like I said, most of this stuff has been out of print for about 25 years. So, wherever you can get it. Mm. But I wanted to get on and do a real quick stream and show that. Um, my health is a little bit up and down, guys. Um, I get certain points where I don't feel that great. My I was giving me trouble about a couple of weeks ago. Um, I had a blood vessel get excreted and my eye was bloodshot for a while so I didn't really want to get on stream uh, it was kind of aggravating and uh, so I had to suffer for it for about two weeks um, it finally went down and went back to normal but stuff like that happens so I deal with it um, I also get tired easy you know just day to day dealing with this um, Christmas like I said is holidays so everything's hectic um, I'm lucky to be able to sit and Remember what comes out of my mouth half the time. Um, last couple of days, I felt just kind of, uh, um, I just, I didn't get on and stream because I didn't feel like I could keep up the momentum or the energy that I usually have. And so I didn't want to cheat anybody. Um, we get on here, hang out a little bit, and have a look see here. But look at that the Hall of Mages, Caramantaz, and Bapu, Parsalian's Lavatory. Yeah. Hall of Mages. Zabai, the skull cap. Yeah. Fist and Dandalus. But see, they don't really cover this in the books. They mention it, but they don't really cover it. It's hinted at. They were supposed to go there, but they didn't really. Same thing with Ice Wall. They covered it in later books. Later on, they went back and rewrote about it, but for the most part, they didn't. Most of Dragonlance, if you really wanted to condense it down, most of Dragonlance was Dragons of Autumn Twilight. Okay, They wrote Dragons of Autumn Twilight and then because they really didn't know if there was going to be another book. And then after that, it was basically trying to fill in all the blanks with all the stuff that came afterwards. So if you really want the essence of Dragonlance, in my opinion, it would be Dragons of Autumn Twilight. That's where most of the most of the uh, essential bits that that Lauren Tracy and Margaret Weiss wanted. Okay, um, everything after that was everybody else's Dragonlance. Most of the people that came along after, you know. So there is kind of a big difference. There's the stuff that. Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman wrote with Dragons of Autumn Twilight. And then what came after that was kind of an expansion on what they had to deal with. 
You know, they did not have complete control of it. They never did. Santa Claus does not live at the North Pole. Okay, guys? You have to remember that there was more than one person that did work on Dragonlance. And for most of it, like I said, you know, they got to play the game maybe once or twice, if at all, the whole time that they worked at TSR to actually sit down and play it before they had to go write the books. Okay, that's just the reality. All right? So... You know, you take it as it is. A lot of people, it was a hard pill to swallow. They think that Dragonlance was one nice, tight piece. It took many, many decades to fit all that stuff together to make it look like they knew what they were doing. Okay? I understand it more now than I ever did. Okay? You know, it was. It was a work in progress, and, you know, they flew by the seat of their pants, and they pulled it off. Pre-internet. Pre-internet. Do you realize that? That that book sold pre-internet, a fantasy book. I mean, that's pretty significant. So. I don't think I got my chat on. I don't know if somebody might be talking and I can't see them. I'm sorry. No, I don't see anybody. I see one person in, but that's about it. Okay, guys, hold on just a second, let me, oh shit, well, oops, there we go. Sylvanus Tower, Tower of the Stars, yeah, Port Balafour, the Pig and Whistle, Mequesta, the Carthon, Ship, Istar, the sunken temple beneath this star. And then the hidden laboratory. Zebula's refuge. I'm trying to remember who Zebula was. Meaning was Zebula and Apoletta. Caraman and Tika's room. I'm assuming that's in Legends. Maybe. It's been a while. God, I gotta go back and read Legends. Shit. I mean, I've gotten rusty on it. I may meaning to. <laughs> But they give the timeline for legends and their path that they took and all that. Foghaven Vale, yep. Yeah, the 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 yeah. The maps for Foghaven Vale. Yeah, that's gonna come in handy for sure. Yep. Look at that. Silver Dragon Mountain, the Ruin Keep, the Dragon's Lair. Huma's Tomb, the Upper Gallery, look at there, False Treasure Room, Windpipe, Mount Nevermind, good God, look at all that. How many levels? 35 levels. <sighs> the White Stone, where everybody was sitting, Nosh, Fizzman, and Tasselhoff, the Dragon Orb, the Quest of Carthon. Split made by the Dragon Lance. Crack from the Cataclysm. Split the White Stone in half with the Dragon Lance. But they only had one to beat the band. They only had one working Dragon Lance. They were bluffing. See, that's the metaphor. Okay? They had one working dragon lance. They had one concrete book. Everything else they had to pretend and allude to. Okay? Dragons of Winter Night and Dragons of Spring Dawning, that was basically flying by the seat of their pants. With the excess of the first book, they had to go, okay, we got to put two more after it. And that's what they did. They had to follow it up. So if you really want the core of Dragonlance, look for it mostly in Dragons of Autumn Twilight. Right there. That's the core of the Dragonlance. Right there. It's Dragons of Autumn Twilight. After that, after everybody else took over, you know, it went off in all these other directions. That's where it would be, yeah, Dragons of Autumn Twilight. Flying Citadel, yeah. There's all kinds of shit here. 
Chamber of the Dragon Orb. I mean, these maps are wonderful. Yeah, this has a better map of the High Clarish Tower. I like this map better than the one that's in the module. Look at all that. Yeah, I would definitely recommend these. I would most certainly re Look at all that. Look at the detail. See? Yeah, I would definitely recommend the Dragonlance Atlas. The Atlas of the Dragonlance World. Yep. I think they've done some later ones too, but this is one of the sa the two E ones. This is when it was in its prime, so... Dargard Keep. Yeah. Kitty R's room in Dargard Keep. <sighs> the Rocka. The Valenwood Bridge. The Gorge. Fisman's Bridge. While well, driving through the mountains, for this was the site of Glitter Palace, the famed home of Paladin. Vast Cathedral Walls. The Nexus Chamber. Beyond the doors, a huge circle of dome where the die is holding a throne of over 100 feet tall, the Nexus Chamber. Three doors led from the chamber, transporting those who entered to test areas which sharpened their skills and revealed possible methods of destroying the Dark Queen. See, this could be put into a game. This right here. Paladins. The test of wisdom occurred in a volcano and could have possibly have ended with Fizzman as Paladine confronting Takesis. The test of valor occurred in a vacated pre-war Vingar Keep, ending with the possibility that a self-sacrificing companion could close the portal to the abyss by entering permanently. The test of the heart lay on a thousand foot Moreland Plateau overlooking Calumet. When he joined her, the portal would supposedly close. All these revelations were only possibilities, not the actual accomplishment of the goal. The company was forced to continue to Naraka. Whether or not the companions entered Glitter Palace, see, there's all this stuff that they allude to that they never really wrote about. Although it was daylight when Tannis and Tazel followed Fizzman on the surface as the old mage carried Flint to the center, yeah, that's right. As Fizzman reached the heart of God's home, his true nature was revealed, for he disappeared, and the constellation of Paladin appeared in the rock. That's right. He did. That's right, and Flint died, and... Yep. And we'll probably do that theme again... When we go to do Burfoot, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some research and play on that. Yeah, eventually, yeah, that will become a thing again. I got a feeling it will. Yep. Okay, I'm still scrolling here, guys, but I'm laying out and I'm thinking of what else I can show you here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I got tons of stuff, trust me. Got all kinds of shit. Toad's platform, that's the uh, Temple of the Dark Queen. See, this is the pathways. River and turns to Quashu. Prince of Staff the Chieftain. River and go and find themselves out. Okay. Fight the Dracones on Haven Road. Prayers I beat. 
14. So on September 13th, so the Mahira's meeting takes place on a September 13th. Is this like the anniversary of the book? Yep. It's kind of funny because September 13th, it's right about the time I was introduced to Dragonlance originally. Huh. The year that I was introduced to Dragonlance is the same year that uh, gamers from Wis uh, Michigan set Margaret Weiss's deck on fire. Yep. They set her deck on fire. Yeah, I have Tarsus. So, all of Dragons of... Well, damn, if it was by the 26th and they had already... Shit, so they had already had their meeting at the inn and gone through Zach Saroth and Pax Tharkas before the month was out, okay? They reached... Dragon Argy retakes Pax Tharkas. Last day of autumn, reach Hubble Vale, Go Moon and River Moon, Mary. Yep. See? Yeah. All that shit, okay? So, the first part of Dragons of Autumn Twilight occurs in just a matter of days, okay? From the 13th. Attack of Dragon 916, 917. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. In under five days. Dragons of Autumn Twilight took less than five days to complete. I guess four, five. Yep. 13, 14, because it ends. Well, no. They rescued the discs on the 17th. So. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, yeah. Yeah, five days. Five days. A little under a week. I mean, that's something. Do you imagine the distance they traveled in five days? That's a lot of damn ground to cover. Yeah. That's their path. Solace to Ice Wall. Yeah. Yeah, quite a few actually. 921, 918. See, they've even got it marked. It says it's about 15 miles. That's a span of 15 miles. So, you can go about, I, people claim that you can walk about 15 miles in a day, maybe. If you walked all day, you can hit about 15 miles. That's not very far. <laughs> that's not very far in terms of a car, that's for fucking damn sure. But The average person can cover about 15 miles a day, if that. Wow. Yeah, buddy. Yep. I don't know about that. It's supposed to be a drawing of Tachesis. And he says that when he was looking above, Fantas found himself in the abyss via another route and discovered the true nature of its terrain. From Raceland's laboratory, deep below the destroyed temple of Istar, Taz emerged through a crack into a strangely featureless and almost colorless undulating land. Hidden within the red tinge folds of the abyss were holy precincts of the dark clerics. But neither the precincts nor any of the features were apparent to those journeying on the surface. In other words, you can't see it. The power of thought was preeminent. When Taz asked to see the person in charge, the landscape changed. It was every city and yet none. Familiar yet he didn't recognize a thing. Lifeless yet teeming with life. And when he arrived at what reportedly was the waiting room of Tachesis, as far as he could see, he was standing in the middle of nothing.
Yet Chris Anna and Rice physically tore across to what appeared to be an image of Ancelon. However, floating above the abyss, Taz realized that the strange undulating pattern was the face of Tachesis. Whatever he's talking about, it's like a bad acid trip. Describing the abyss, buddy, that was... Yeah, it was confusing. I can remember reading it in Legends, and I'm just like, eh, okay. Yeah, it was. I mean, they did get metaphysical on that. And when you start getting into Planescape... And how that shit works. And there was a book by William Slater called The Boy Who Reversed Himself. And um, it dealt with the fourth dimension and shit like that. Yeah, it was a very weird book. Alrighty, guys. Ha! <sighs> Alright, I'm going to uh, take a little bit of a break. I'm going to uh, wipe my bowl here, and I'm going to come back. We've been on for how many minutes? We've been on about 40 minutes. That's not too bad. But I wanted to do a little quick Dragon Lance stream. Um, I might fire up some uh, Heroes of the Lance or something. I've got a whole bunch to play. Um, what else did I buy? Um, I bought um, Knights of the Old Republic for PC. Um... Uh, what else did I purchase? I can't think of anything else right off the bat. But uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a break, guys, and I'll come back. Okay? Um, we'll be right back. Go take you a little bit of a break. And uh, I'll come back with something here in a minute. I'll find something else to pull up here. Okay. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Hold on just a second here. Let me see if I can remember what I got here. Mm. Let's see. What do I got here? Oh, I got something. Uh, how about this? Okay. Um. Yeah. There we go. How about a player's primer to the Outlands? Let me pull it up. Mm -hmm. There we go. There we go. Okay. A player's primer to the Outlands. Okay. Have a look at this. Planescape. Picked this up recently. Okay. No, it came with a CD. No, yeah, I don't have the CD, obviously. But nice. Ha! <sighs> 
Sigil was alive. The cage seemed alive. Oh, I was going to read out the, uh, I know what I was going to do while we're thinking about it. Yuletide. History of the Dragonlance. Let me see here. Let's get the thing on the Yuletide ceremony. I'll read it out. Okay, let's see here. So as I can find it. Let me move this down just a little bit. I guess you can read that. Let me zoom in on it a little bit. That work? Yeah, okay. I guess you can read that. All right, take a look for a second. I'm looking. Let me read that for a minute. <laughs> I'm trying to find the antling here. Yeah. Mm. I don't have, um, guys, I don't have my chat 100% set up. I can see some people typing in chat, but I don't have it set up to where you can see it, so I'm sorry it might be a little confusing. Occasionally somebody will pop in and I'll answer them. Um, but it's not because I'm not seeing it, guys. I see you. It's just, I, I'll get it set up to where I can talk back and forth to people eventually. Part of it, there's a delay, so it makes it a little aggravating. It's part of my internet connection, believe it or not. I don't have 100% the fastest internet, so I make do with a partial delay a little bit. There is about an eight-second delay with it. Okay, let's see here. We want... All right. For Kinder, okay, Yule, which is December 22nd. Thanks a lot, Day is December 6th. Um, thanks a lot, Day, December 6th. On this date, Kinder give thanks for all the things that have dropped in their pockets in the past year. They celebrate by roasting the traditional goat sucker bird. It's not much of a feast since the birds are relatively small, according to this one. Okay, I made a meaner one. But Kinder enjoys spending months hunting for the fearsome fowl. Yeah, uh huh After the meal comes a sort of show and tell where they view and hear about each other's favorite possessions. This, of course, leads to handling, and the conversation inevitably drifts toward, you must have dropped it. This looks like just like yours, don't it? And the other popular kinder phrases. All of the races assiduously avoid kinder on this day, but then they try to always anyway. Thanks a lot, Dave. December 6th. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I got a broken heart. That's what I got. Oh, Ernest, Ernest Tubb. Yeah. Made me cry and laughed a lot. I lost your love. Honey, thanks a lot. Yeah, I could have played that during the during the break. <laughs> I guess I could have. All right, Yule, December 22nd. The winter solstice. It's my damn... No, it ain't. Okay. The winter solstice. The shortest day of the year is observed as the last date for safe visits to family and friends before the heavy snows fall. It is a popular day for weddings and coming-of-age celebrations. In human communities, the homes, guild halls, and other public buildings have lighted candles placed in each window at dusk and are trimmed with overbloom wreath, with everbloom wreaths symbolizing friendship and bouquets of imported yellow roses. Hard candies, chocolates, and jelly-filled confections made in the shape of the legendary dragons are popular with children. Regional traditions abound. Many dwarves decorate small native trees with fruits and nuts dipped in precious metals. Okay. Plainsmen braid prairie grasses into garlands, asking the spirits of the land to visit in their homes during the Yule season. Elf families make special Yule chimes. Knights of Soamia stage an elaborate hunt for the boar whose head will adorn the Yule table. So they have a boar hunt. Yeah, Pez had a festival where he broke a knight's thumbs during a Yuletide, one of Gunthar's festivals. Drunken knight challenged him to thumb wrestle, and Pez accidentally broke his thumbs. The people of many coastal communities, particularly among the Korean Ocean, pin notes to friends 
or distant relatives and toss them into the sea in bottles for the fates to deliver. That sounds like something Pez would do. On Mount Nevermind, always a noisy place, the gnomes activate all their contraptions at once. The cacophony is tremendous, as reported by anyone who's a witness, witnessed the event and survived. A very old kinder tradition involves bringing treasures one is no longer fond of and adding them to the bonfire tender to symbolize ridding themselves of the dead wood in their lives. It's a very old kinder tradition. Huh. A very old kinder tradition involves bringing treasures one is no longer fond of and adding them to bonfire tender to symbolize ridding themselves of the dead wood in their lives. Of course, most of the treasures disappear before the fire could be lit, but, they're usually, but usually there is enough for a tidy little campfire for roasting small meats. Whatever each nation's culture, the most universal tradition involves lighting the Yule log, which is intended to last the whole winter. Afterward, food and supplies are exchanged, and a final toast is given before families part for the long, bitter winter ahead. And that is the entry for Yuletide, December 22nd, in the Dragonlance world. Okay, guys. Let's see what we got here. Am I even rolling? Huh. All right. We'll look back here. I don't know. Did my camera freeze? No, it didn't freeze. Okay. I was like, see if the camera froze. I don't know. Sometimes it does. Damn thing will freeze on me. Yep. Silver skulls leaves. An alley that wasn't there. The gate towns, yep. Yep. Yep, all this material is for players to read, consult, debate, and to interpret. If I can find the CD, I'll look it up. You think it'd be on YouTube? I don't know if I play it out. You'd probably get a copyright strike if you tried to. Audio they do. Music and stuff they're real iffy on. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if I can get away with playing the audio or not. See, audio stuff is iffy. I can get away with streaming, like, looking at uh, PDF, you know, because I bought the damn thing, you know. Um, or it's out of print, you know. There's nothing wrong with that. But I don't know if they'd let me, um, even though I'm not monetized. Um, audio CDs, yeah, they get real iffy about that stuff. You know, it's kind of weird. I don't know. The Mimir. Yep. A Mimir. Yep. Moving through the Outlands. It's 43 pages. No, the Outlands... Um, the Outlands was considered to be a training ground. For before you went some to put somebody in Sigil, okay? In all honesty, your players will die in Sigil if they don't behave, okay? Sigil's not a place to fuck around and find out, okay? I'll tell you that right now, okay? If they play it like they're supposed to, Sigil is extremely dangerous. Sigil you do not want to mess with. But usually the Outlands are like the training grounds before you run them into there. Yep. It's just a supplement. Bedlam. Spyward. These are gate towns. Yep. You have to look them up, I guess. Cursed. Cursed is in the Planescape Torment game. You actually go to Cursed. Yep. Yep, you go to Cursed. Yeah, I guess I could pull that up later. I'll have to get on Xbox to do it. I can't run it on PC. It won't run. It keeps screwing up. I don't know. I guess i got to adjust the resolution on it. But I can get it to run on Xbox. 
Yeah, I think I can pull that up after a while. That ain't too bad. I think I'll get on and do that. That don't sound bad at all. That don't sound like a bad idea at all. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I'll hook the camera up here in a little bit, and I'll run some torment. That sounds good. That sounds real good. I started a new game here not too long ago. I played it a couple of days ago, so. I got all kinds of stuff to play, guys. It's just my health is, I get tired. I don't know. I've been having, here lately, I've been, I guess I'm getting old. Because I'll be feeling okay, and I'll get in the middle of something, and then all of a sudden I'll just get, and my stomach will start feeling weird, and I just, and I have to sit down. I just work through it to get those little episodes. My blood pressure, probably. Who knows? We'll figure it out. Well, that's all this is. It's uh, about gate towns. It's okay, I guess. Rib cage. Yeah, but don't really have any pictures. See, that's just it. It's kind of, it's got a couple of pictures, but. See, I like the Planescape artwork. I do. This is mostly text. Oh, there's some artwork. Bury our tribes, the court of light. Yeah. Bury ours are exclusive to Planescape. Uh, most of the time, if you were going to play a Bury our character, and that's what they are. They're a um, Centaur, Bury or whatever you want to call them. Uh, most of the time, they're in Planescape. Okay, they're one of the races that are in Planescape. So, yep. The Bury are. Yep, they are a Planescape race. Yeah. Uh, Barriars, uh, Davis, and Modrons are three that are essential to Planescape, if I'm thinking correctly. Yep. Same one use Bog. Yep. Turn a nog. Some of this is repeated in the Planescape Torment. But, but. Compact Mimi. Oh, this is basically just audio that talks about it. Well, look it up. Go to YouTube, I guess. A player's guide to the Outlands. A player's primer to the Outlands. We'll look it up. I'll go look it up on YouTube. A player's primer to the Outlands. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. But see, this is a track listing right here. I'll definitely go look it up for sure. Yeah. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Hmm. All right, guys. But I usually port these over to YouTube. Okay. Um, I'm hoping to get some more Dragonlance stuff set up, guys. I'm, I was trying to think of what I was going to cover today. If I was feeling a little bit better, I probably would have tried to run a little bit of a... I had an idea. I was going to run a Solace uh, in the last home thing. Um, I will get to it eventually. Um, it's just, I got to, uh, when I'm feeling a little bit better right now, I'm, I'm kind of iffy, so I'm not going to attempt it. Unfortunately, my body tends to go, uh, I'm in a body that wants to do stuff that, uh, my mind wants to do it and my body don't. Yeah. But you bet you bet on that. Mm. Jeff Grubb and Colin McComb. Yep. A player's primer to the Outlands. Planescape accessory for all levels. An audio compact disc that represents a Mimir. A new magical item offering a strange and thrilling tour of the Outlands. More than 40 C tree tracks allow players to hear what their characters would hear when consulting this handy, some say dangerous oracle. Get the chant from the player's primer. Fifteen dollars. Yeah, it priced at fifteen fucking dollars. You want to know how much that sucker would be today? You'd be paying about thirty-five easy, at least. Gotta love that inflation, my man. That's what I mean. 
the price of half of the Dragonlance and Dungeons and Dragons stuff today is astronomical. There's no way in hell that I can keep up with the hobby. If I hadn't have bought most of my stuff 20 years ago, that's why you have to be smart in your collecting. Um, that's what I mean, guys. Stuff has changed so damn much. But you can imagine. I mean, look at what part of why TSR went bankrupt is because they put a lot of stuff like this out. Problem was, it didn't sell as well. So, there you go. Sometimes it's got a lot of fluff, but, you know, if it doesn't sell, then unfortunately they had a lot of trial and error. Yep. All right, guys. Um, we're going to call this a little bit of a stream here. We've been on for an hour. I'm going to get on a little bit later, and I'm going to stream some Planescape. I'm going to get on Xbox, okay? Um, but thank you all for tuning in. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Like I said, uh, Dragonlance, Warriors of Cran, it's on uh, sale at Ollie's. Uh, you can pick it up for 10 bucks. Um, you get six miniatures out of it. So if you get nothing else, get it for the miniatures. It's got a Kenner miniature, so that's pretty good. And you can reappropriate all the pieces and use the stuff. Uh, you can rewrite the lore, and you can still use the same system. It's still usable. There are second edition people who are familiar with this and actually have started to play it. So anything's possible. Guys, I can make take just about anything and reappropriate it. Okay? It's not hard for me to do. All right, guys, this is Engine Joe. You guys have a good uh, good holiday. We'll try to get back on and holler at you a little bit later. I'm going to play some Planescape here after a while, okay? Um, what else can I think of? I can't think of nothing else offhand. If I come up with anything else, you'll see it here. I stream. I don't really have a stream schedule. Um, I'm not monetized. I bring everything to you completely free. If you have something that you want me to look up or you want to see, let me know. Leave me a message. Leave me a comment. Okay, for something that you uh, want me to look up or find, I'll see if I can't find it and we'll look for it. I'll see if I can't run it out on stream or run it out on camera for you. i do something. If I had more people to talk to, I'd pull out a little bit more. But it just depends. i do whatever I can think of up in my little head and what my health allows. All right, guys. Have a happy holiday and thank you all for tuning in. This is Engine Joe. Y'all roll on. All right.